Hello YouTubers, sometimes I'll be on my phone and I'll be messing with ROMs in RetroArch and I'll be downloading some IPS patches and I always have to use to transfer the ROMs and the IPS patches to my PC so I can patch them with an IPS program and then transfer them back to my phone. And one afternoon I was using my phone and I was thinking, what if I could find a program that would apply IPS patches right on my phone and I did. I had just looked up IPS patch on the Play Store and this program called Unipatcher came up right away. Now, not only does this program apply IPS patches to ROM files, it also removes SMC headers, fixes bad checksums, and it also creates patches. I'm going to show you right now how easy it is to do a couple of these. First, let's try to apply a regular patch. I threw a couple of things in this folder so I don't have to go hunting for them. Okay, I downloaded this patch called New Super Mario World 2. So for a ROM file, I'm going to select Super Mario World. Now all I do is I click where it says Output File here, and I click Save. I usually just pick the same folder. Press this little circular button in the lower right corner. That's it. Just takes a second and patching is complete. Now that I've got you here, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do Super Metroid Ascent. But that requires a ROM of JU exclamation point, I believe. That's what they told me that I should download. But instead of doing any of that, I just removed the header from my old American ROM, and it seemed to work just fine. So I just go down here to select Remove SMC Header. ROM file with SMC Header to be removed. Just select Super Metroid, output location, same, done. Tap the little button, it takes like a second. Now I'm going to go apply patch, select the patch file, ascent 112 IPS, ROM file, I'm going to go look for that patched one. Okay, here we go, Super Metroid headerless, output file, same folder. Click the button again, done. That's how easy it is to patch these files. It's, it's incredibly easy. Next, I'm actually going to show you these run on my phone for just a minute here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try the first one now, which is New Super Mario Bros. 2. I usually die in pretty hilarious ways, so if you've got a beer, crack one open now. I'm just going to go ahead and do World 1-1. One, one. When I'm using a touchscreen controller, I don't use the run button, ever. So I can't really do the hard Mario levels because they require you to use that button. Or Yoshi, for that matter. I'm also not super coin obsessed. I really don't care if I get all the coins. Extra lives are great, I guess. Whatever. Hmm. I guess I can live slightly longer if I got the tools to do it, like the fireball. So, Mario's fireball, I always felt like it was kind of lame. You know, his fireball ain't no Dragon Ball Z. I'm surprised I made it this far. Oh, here's a new mechanic introduced in this ROM hack. 
the wall jump. And it's a lot easier than pulling off the one in Super Metroid, believe me. I hate the wall jump in Super Metroid. I like the Shine Spark though. The Shine Spark is cool. Oh, just screw it. I'm running out of time here. I want to be able to say I beat one level. Okay, I'm going to get one level done and we're going to go on to the other game. I believe this game also auto-saves after every level too. It's a pretty nice feature. Okay, we're going to try the next one, Metroid Ascent. I mean, Super Metroid Ascent. I have to say this is completely different from the original Super Metroid, so it's also a complete ROM hack. It's a totally new game. If you've never played the first one through without the ROM hack, I would highly recommend you do that because it's really an amazing game. This game's got new music, new graphics, new weapons, I believe, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Yeah, you may know this from watching my previous videos. The wall jump almost always screws me, especially on a touch controller. This is one nice little thing about this ROM hack, the fire speed was increased. I always felt like the fire speed was too low on, on the uh, pea shooter. Can't get up to that door, I've already tried, but... What you're actually supposed to do is grab the morph ball. It's up there somewhere. Hope this was the right way. Good. I guess that walkthrough I watched helped. Only watched about 10 minutes of it, but so far I think this is amazing enough. I'm definitely going to get into this. I can already tell the graphics are even improved beyond the original also. But, I'm definitely not going to make it through this level or any other level in this video. I just wanted to show you guys for a couple of minutes. This is visually enhanced a lot. I don't know exactly what levels have the new music, but there is new music, new graphics, new monsters, I believe. I got my copy of this IPS file off metroidconstruction.com. Okay, I'm just going to break my oath to myself and just for once use two buttons. It's just hard on a touch screen.
For some reason, RetroArch doesn't like my controller, but ReDream and EPSXE and everything else I use, they don't have a problem with my controller. So I still haven't figured it out yet. I'm, I'm gonna keep trying to figure out the issue, and if I do, I might make a video about it. There's usually a fix if you just dig hard enough. I really love the way this ROM hack looks so much. I don't know what monster that was. This, this is all really interesting to me. I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, though. I've, I've already seen enough of this. Oh, I found my first save point. Nice. Okay, that's a good spot. I'm going to end it right now. I just want to say thank you for watching my video. Just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to patch something on a phone and to actually be able to play these ROM hacks on your phone. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.